Hello, I'm here today to talk to you about the deployment of species detection chemistries, their potential applications and conservation efforts, and the technology development work we're doing at Conservation X Labs. First, a little bit about the work we do. Conservation X Labs mission is to prevent the sixth mass extinction. Conservation X Labs is a technology and innovation company that creates solutions to prevent the extinction crisis through developing new technology in our labs, harnessing planetary genius through innovation competitions, and empowering talented innovators across disciplines to create transformative products that serve people and our planet. Conservation X Labs is pioneering a new model for conservation built on exponential technologies like artificial intelligence and synthetic biology, coupled with financial and behavior change innovations, and scaled through the private sector, partnerships with conservation organizations, and collaborations with governments and intergovernmental entities. By harnessing the democratization of science and technology and the power of new solvers from around the world, conservation can operate at the pace and on the scale necessary to keep up with and even get ahead of the planet's most intractable environmental challenges. My name is David Bache, and I'm the Molecular Innovations Director at Conservation X Labs. For the last five years, we have been working on the development of a handheld, battery-powered, easy-to-use, rugged genetic detection device that can serve as a platform to equitably bring powerful species detection assays into the field and into the hands of those who need it most. We call this device the NABIT, the Nucleic Acid Barcode Identification Tool. We intend to deploy this device across the world to help with the fight against illegal wildlife trafficking, increasing supply chain transparency, halting the spread of invasive species, detecting pests and pathogens to support sustainable agriculture, among many other impactful use cases. Here's a brief background on what drove the development of this device. We are in the midst of a human-induced extinction crisis, the Anthropocene. There are many factors contributing to this unprecedented loss of species, including poaching, overexploitation of stressed populations, habitat fragmentation, pressures from alien invasive species, climate change, among many other factors. The scale of this problem often becomes hard to grasp, but can be staged with a few sobering statistics listed here. About 33% of seafood, broadly, is mislabeled at the consumer level. The illegal trade of wildlife and wildlife products has created the fourth largest illicit economy in the world. Annual losses globally from illegal logging total between 30 and 100 billion US dollars, an amount equal to about 20 to 30 percent of the total global wood trade. Not to be all doom and gloom, but how did we end up here? You may wonder, if there's so much illegal activity going on, why don't we find it more often? Customs agents must balance upholding laws and regulations through screening and inspections, while also allowing the flow of commerce to continue. This balancing act results in concealing illicit goods becoming a numbers game for traffickers, as most containers simply aren't physically inspected due to time constraints. This, combined with the lack of inspection infrastructure in many of the originating ports, results in nearly uncontrolled trade of illegal wildlife and products and a lot of the current technical expertise required to detect this illicit activity is not easily accessible by enforcement or conservation agents. When illicit activity is encountered or suspected, the investigation into these products can take months to years to return results. The laboratory facilities in charge of analyzing these samples unfortunately become inundated with suspect samples, resulting in large turnaround times. The technology and expertise required to provide actionable information is often too far removed from the point of potential interdiction. One of the most common identification methods employed by these laboratories is the analysis of DNA barcodes. These barcode sequences vary enough that they differ in between species, but typically not so much within the species. In animals, the most common barcode is a sequence called CO1, which is located inside of the animal cell's mitochondrial genome. In order to establish these species-specific DNA barcode sequences, expertly identified vouchered specimens are used to serve as a baseline representative sample of a species across its range. 
Unfortunately, most species with the greatest need of monitoring and management do not currently have sufficient genetic information and metadata available to create a defensible detection chemistry. There is an urgent need for species experts to contribute vouchered specimen sequences to help close this gap. If we are to stem the tide of this extinction, not only must identification chemistries be developed to answer these species identification and origin questions, but easy to use sample preparation methods must be provided for untrained users to ensure that these tests are successful and produce high quality outputs for decision support. These solutions must also be inexpensive enough so that they may be scaled to the size of these extinction level problems and be accessible to those in biodiverse, low resource settings where many of these threatened species live. The shockwave of the COVID-19 pandemic has changed how the entire world operates, but in that upheaval, there may be opportunities. Perhaps one of the greatest opportunities and challenges for the scientific community has been the evaluation, dissemination, and communication of complex scientific hypotheses and research for the public. Here is the Google search term data for the term PCR since 2004. Despite being a mainstay of a scientist's tool belt for nearly 40 years, knowledge and understanding of this process didn't enter the public mind until the beginning of the pandemic last year. These nucleic acid detection chemistries are now broadly being recognized and considered for a quickly increasing amount of applications. The constant need of tools and resources to combat the wicked problems contributing to the Anthropocene, combined with the changes from the pandemic, pushed Conservation Next Labs to create the NAVIT. This is our handheld, easy to use solution to these wicked problems. The currently accepted sample inputs include swabs and scrapes with additional sample types currently under development. The battery powered device contains an integrated sample heater for sample treatment and extraction. The swab or scrape is inserted into the lysis tube where it is heated and extracted. The extracted sample is then buffered and then transferred to our five well cartridge where it resuspends four individual species identification reactions and one positive control which measures potential inhibition. At high input target concentrations, results can be returned in as little as 18 minutes. The NABIT can currently serve as a platform for any fluorescent isothermal chemistry or process. These chemistries can be designed down to the species level using unique artifacts in the DNA barcode sequences of the target, while also including representative sequences from potential non-targets which may be present in the sample to ensure specificity. Once the chemistry has been validated in the lab and lyophilization feasibility of the assay is completed, field-ready cartridges can be produced with appropriate field sampling kits that can be deployed to verify presence or identity of a target species. Since isothermal chemistries can target either DNA or RNA targets, assays can be developed to not only detect animal, plant, and fungi DNA barcodes, but also RNA viruses and RNA products inside of eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. One early application that has been developed is a differential identification test between Atlantic salmon and Chinook salmon using mitochondrial DNA CO1 barcodes. The developed test uses a simple swab of the fillet which is extracted, diluted, and transferred into the cartridge which is inserted into the device. The device then facilitates the reaction and automatically interprets the results displaying to the user which species of salmon was detected, if any, in around 30 minutes. The test was developed initially to detect substitution of expensive Chinook salmon for much cheaper Atlantic salmon for use by consumers, restaurants, and seafood distributors and importers. This same test could be used to detect the presence of Atlantic salmon DNA in environmental watershed samples. For example, here in Washington state, the Atlantic salmon is an invasive alien species and filtered water could be input into the test process to to tell in the field if Atlantic salmon is present in the sampled watershed and could provide actionable information on site for the control of this invasive species. Another application that has been developed for the NABIT is a two gene test for SARS-CoV-2, the virus which causes COVID-19. 
The Nabbit platform has been modified and improved over the last two years to accept nasal swabs as an input into the test, which has an observed reliable LOD of less than one copy per microliter in the final reaction volume. As new chemistries and approaches become accepted as standard practice, we will improve the Nabbit to host them. Future versions of the Nabbit will also incorporate the ability to use thermocyclic heating profiles, which will unlock key PCR assays to be used on our platform. A huge number of use cases will also drive the development of peripheral sample preparation devices to unlock a diverse set of difficult input sample types. We are eager to host developed species detection chemistries for conservation applications. Please reach out to us if you have developed a chemistry or have a need for identifying species in the field. Lastly, I'd like to thank our incredible leadership and team for all of their hard work during these challenging times. Thanks so much for your time today. Please feel free to reach out through our website to find more on the NABIT device and its progress.